to Gainesville, Florida. We're at the O'Connell Center on the campus of the University of Florida for the 1997 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Joyce. The history of this competition has always revolved around three schools, Utah, Alabama, and Georgia. No one else has ever even won the NCAA championship, but this year, for the first time ever, neither Utah nor Alabama will compete for the team title. Both failed to make the Super Six. Georgia, meantime, did qualify for the Super Six competition, along with UCLA, Arizona State, Michigan, Florida, and Nebraska. Joining me now, our analysts for this competition, 1984 Olympic gold medalist Julianne McNamara. Hard to believe Utah and Alabama with 12 NCAA titles between them are out. What does that do to the field? Well, Andrea, in the past few years, we've talked a lot about the parity in women's collegiate gymnastics. This year, the gymnasts are even talking about it because in the preliminary competition, it was the most intense ever. It's not really that Utah and Alabama perform so poorly. It's just that all the other teams have gotten so much better that the gap has really been narrowed and this championship is wide open. It would appear though on paper that Georgia has the edge. They do have the top ranked team on vault, bars and floor. Well, they're by far the most experienced team, comprised mainly of juniors and seniors. They have a very showy and exciting style and their rock is Kim Arnold, a top all-around performer who still brings that dazzling style but is very grounded, very consistent, and a very clean performer. So where will their biggest competition come from? Well, UCLA is by far their biggest competition. The only thing that UCLA is lacking is the tradition of winning. They've always been an extremely talented team. This year, they have the consistency to go along with it. They have a great team leader in Leah Homa. She is an unbelievably talented all-around performer. They describe themselves as cool and calm, very different style from Georgia. And Michigan, they have been coming on the last few years. They were only missing a tiny little piece to that puzzle. Well, they found their piece in a great new freshman, Sarah Kane. She's brought depth to the team, a lot of poise, and has been very solid for them. She's made them into not just a maybe contender, but a definite contender. No question about it. This is a big time event for Nebraska. The Cornhuskers celebrating their first ever appearance in the Super Six. And in the first rotation, Arizona State starts on vault, Florida on bars, Georgia is on beam, Nebraska starts off on the floor. Here's Jenny Bathard, first up for Georgia on beam, 20 years old, a very consistent leadoff performer for the Gym Dogs. And the leadoff spot is most important on this event, the balance beam, where you really want to start off with a solid score and then build those scores as the team progresses. Here's her key move here. Two back handsprings into a laid out backflip. Oh. Five tenths of a point deduction. More than anything, I think emotionally for a team to start out this way. It's very unsettling. They need to regain their composure. Well, Jenny Bethard still doesn't seem to have her rhythm back up on the beam. She's definitely been a little flustered. Understandably, they've got a lot of pressure on them here. That was a nice switch side leap. Straddle jump combination, a requirement. music you hear in the background is for the floor exercise. Four events going on at one time in this one gym. Remember, they've still got five performers, and if they all hit, they don't have to count the fall, but it just puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the team. A double twist dismount, nice dismount. But not exactly the way Suzanne Yachlin wants to start this competition. We always talk about the hips being squared over the beam, and you can see here, her right hip just completely pulls her off. And a 9-3-0 for Bethard. Georgia definitely will want to drop that score. Over to the bars now in Florida's Chrissy Bogle, a five-time All-America from right here in Gainesville. She'll start out with a giant fold to a release move, a very nice high that's called a Dukachev. It's difficult because you're actually flying over the bar. 
blind. You can't see it until you actually re-grasp the high bar. Setting up for her dismount, double back in a tuck position. Solid performance for the 22-year-old. Florida guaranteed a better finish than last year when they came in eighth. The worst they can do this year is sixth. Arizona State's Lisa Vincenjanovic ready to vault. She has been slowed this season by an ankle injury. And watch her approach. It's excellent. She has excellent speed, good height, just a little step on the landing. Coach John Spini delighted to have his team back at the NCAA Championships. First time since 1994. Meantime, Chrissy Vogel scored a 9.80 on her bars routine for the Gators. And Vincent Janovich with a 9.85 for that vault. Over to the floor now, freshman Heather Brink of Nebraska. Brink, the Big 12 Newcomer of the Year. And she's actually setting up for her last tumbling pass here. And remember, this is where you're very tired. And she actually reforms here at tuck double back. Very difficult. Excellent. Well, she may be a freshman, but Heather Brink performing like a seasoned veteran in her first NCAA championship. Rotation one continues in a moment. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships are sponsored by Old Spice High Endurance Deodorant. For long-lasting odor protection, now you've got proof, not promises. Pennzoil, formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Heather Brink scores a 9.75 for her floor routine. The Cornhuskers just missed making the Super 6 last year by 25 hundredths of a point. Meantime, Suzanne Yachlin's Georgia squad always strong, but has stumbled under pressure recently. She addressed that point earlier. First thing I want to talk to you about is pressure. Um, we have a lot of pressure on us right now. You have a lot of pressure on, uh, on yourselves, and I have a lot of pressure on me. Um, I think that it's really important that we just meet it head on and just stare those demons down. Uh, why do we have a lot of pressure on ourselves? We were ranked number one the entire season. Uh, how many times have people said to you that just go out there and win it all? It's your meat to lose. Over and over again we've heard that and that is pressure. But the reality is that it's there. And what we need to do is use that to our advantage and make sure that it's good pressure, that it's something that creates an atmosphere that makes us focus even more. Uh, the fun, the excitement, the fact that the pressure is going to be something that we're just going to absolutely welcome, we're going to embrace it, and we're going to enjoy it, and we're going to ride that pressure all the way through the competition. Now Georgia hoping to shake off a rocky start on beam. Here's Sam Muleman. Jenny Bethard, the first gymnast up for Georgia, fell. So everyone else now on the gym dog team has to hit. She starts with a strength move, a press handstand right into a plunge. And her key move right here, back handspring, layout, back handspring, very difficult. Perfect. Muleman, the co-champion on beam at the Southeast Regionals. There's a jump right into... Oh, man, that will really hurt the gym dogs. They will have to count a fall on beam. And you can see what Suzanne Yachin thinks of that. Tough break for Georgia. Florida also struggling a bit on bars. A 9.15 for Chrissy Van Fleet. Julianne, tell us what happened. Well, it happened on a release move called a piked Jaeger. You'll see her do a pike front. She drives her heels too hard then hits her heel and lands on the ground. Sybil Stevenson will cap it off now on bars for Florida, a junior from Alexandria, Virginia. She's an excellent bar worker. Giant full right into a ganger release move, beautiful. Now watch her hands here. She'll actually reverse her grip. It's called a giant hop. 
Sybil had a clutch performance to help get Florida into the Super Six. She'll dismount with a double tuck. Excellent landing. Well, the Gators needed that one. And what a contrast here. Sam Muleman, the Georgia sophomore, still angry with herself, scores a 9.175 on beam. Moving over to the vault now, here's Megan Wright, Arizona State's only returning All-America from last year. And she's a spectacular vault. She'll do a front with a half twist. Look at that landing. Megan Wright ranks seventh in the nation on vault. Florida has completed the first rotation. Stevenson scoring a 9.850 for the Gators. And a 9.90 for Megan Wright's vault. Karen Litchie, last on beam for Georgia now. They really need a good score here. They already have to count a fall. And that was a variation of the move that Samantha Muleman just fell on. Here's her big tumbling move. Lay out right into another. Oh. Now I'll tell you, that counts just about like a fall. That'll be at least three-tenths of deduction, possibly more. What a shock for Georgia. Litchie at All-America on beam last year. Always difficult to start the competition on this apparatus, but Julianne's still a shock. I'll tell you, it's amazing that she even stayed on the balance beam. She is an excellent beam worker. You can see how solid she is. There's another one of those back handspring quarter turns. Suzanne Yachlin talked to her team about pressure. We heard that a few moments ago, but it does not seem like they've been able to embrace the pressure as they wanted. Gainer layout full. Nice dismount, but a disappointing performance. Again, let's see here. She actually misses a foot on the takeoff. Just shows her strength that she struggled to stay on. And a disappointing 9.450 for Litchie. Georgia in trouble early on. Now here's Kim DeHaan on the floor for Nebraska. And Kim has the classic body for a twister. The long, lean body is very conducive to twisting movements, much more so than flipping movements. Kim has had some lower back problems, so she's focused primarily this season on her floor and bars routines. Kim DeHaan, a great team leader and the epitome of the student athlete. She's got a 4.0 GPA in biological sciences. What a beautiful gymnast to watch with those long lines. I'll tell you, she's, she twists so fast, it was hard for me to even tell. But she actually performs a triple twist here. Very difficult. And DeHaan scores a 9.80. So after one rotation, Arizona State is in the lead, followed by Florida and Nebraska. Georgia more than a full point back. Let's go over to the third member of our team, Michelle Tafoya, with Nebraska coach Dan Kendig. Well, I guess when you make the Super Six for the first time ever, you want to dress for the occasion. What was the decision behind the tuxedo? Well, we said earlier in the year we did this for our Masters Classic, and we said if we make Super Six, we'll do it again. And we didn't bring them with us. We had to rent them down at uh, right here in town. So it was something we, after the meet yesterday, we went out, we sized up, they got them in, and here we are. And Michigan's also all dressed up and ready to go. The Wolverines getting set for the second rotation in a moment. Ready now for the second rotation. Michigan on vault, Sun Devils on bars. UCLA moves to beam, and Georgia will try to pick up some ground on the floor. 
Michigan came in as the number one seed. Coach Bev Plonke hoping her Wolverines will make history at this competition. Yeah, I think that for a team like, you know, a Michigan or a UCLA or, or any of the teams, you know, that, that aren't the Alabama, Utah, and Georgia, to come in here and win a national championship would be incredible. To, to be able to break that, that dynasty, that circle, um, and be the first team to do it, I think, would be incredible. And to do it, they'll need big performances from young women like Beth Amelkovich, sophomore from Lombard, Illinois. And she performs a ball you, we see a lot, pipe front, so she needs to do something really different to stand out. And boy, can't get much better than that. And that's the way you want to start things out at a national championship. That'll surely get the Wolverines fired up. She gets tremendous repulsion off the horse, which allows her to get great height and good distance. And a 9.950 for Amelkovich. That's a new career high for the sophomore. Over to the bars now, Arizona State's sensational freshman, Elizabeth Reed. Elizabeth is really one to keep an eye on. She's a very innovative gymnast. She performs moves here taken from the men's high bar. Watch that Stalder reverse hack. Usually we see that out of a giant. And this is right out of the men's high bar. Watch here. She'll reverse direction and then stoop in and dislocate into German giants. Very, very difficult. One and a half twist flyaway. Reed has been a very consistent performer for the Sun Devils. She doesn't quite look like a freshman out there. Very composed, very businesslike. And speaking of talented freshmen, how about Michigan's Sarah Kane? Julianne, you talked about her at the opening of the show. Well, what an asset she's been to this team. She'll perform again that pike front vault. Just a little hop on the landing, but a very good vault. Freshman of the year and the gymnast of the year in the Big Ten. Elizabeth Reed, a 9.90 for her bars routine. And Sarah Kane with a 9.850. Over to the floor now, and Georgia's Kim Arnold, one of the best floor performers in the nation. She has scored four perfect tens on the floor this year. Georgia could really use one here. She starts off with a difficult tumbling run. She'll do two whips right there to a pike double back. Beautiful. Nice jump combination. difficult pass. I'm really impressed the way that Kim's dance movements have really improved. She's become much more graceful and fluid in her movements. Of course, she's always been very strong. A lot of endurance here to finish with a pike double back. Impressive performance by the 20-year-old from Portland, Oregon. A whip back is basically a back handspring without your hands. Look at the tremendous height. As Georgia tries to dig itself out of a hole, Arnold scores a 9.90. Back with more in a moment. Florida that's Valerie Condos head coach for UCLA after finishing second last year she likes the Bruins chances here I feel that if we have the meet we had last year and Georgia has to count a fall we will win I feel that the difference between last year and this year for us is that last year we weren't expected to do much you know make it to the super six and that's about it and we weren't ranked very high all season. We weren't ranked high coming in. Uh, and so they were able to just go out and do good gymnastics and have fun doing what they love to do. I think the key this year is that they know they're good and they know that they're a championship quality team. 
And the door is open for UCLA. Georgia did have to count a fall and a poor score in the first rotation. Can UCLA capitalize? Here's Leah Homa set to mount the beam she has to hit. The Bruins already have a fall off beam. And that mount was called the Homa Flares, taken from the men's pommel horse, and actually first performed in the balance beam by a teammate of mine, Tracy Talavera. Leah Homa holds the school record on beam for UCLA, a high score of 9.975. She must hit this move, back handspring, layout, back handspring. Just a little tiny bobble. That really should only be about a tenth of a deduction. There's a nice full turn, that's a requirement. Leap right into a gainer layout. Very nice. Oma, the two time Pac 10 gymnast of the year. Setting up for her dismount, gainer layout, full twist. The keeper. Well, Leah Homa, no doubt, breathing a sigh of relief. Happy to be done with that beam routine. Over to the uneven bars now in Arizona State's Amy Shelton, one of the Sun Devils' Fab Four freshmen. Watch her hand movements on this. She actually releases the bar and does a full twist, two hot fulls in a row. Sky highs that to Kachev. Wow. Amy Shelton has been a solid contributor for Arizona State this season. And here's a dismount from my era. Toe on front with a half twist. A great performance. Good difficulty. Great execution. <laughs> Leah Homa, meantime, scores a 9.80 for her beam work. And Amy Shelton with a 9.875. Back over to the vault now in Michigan's Nikki Peters, an all-American vaulter. Pike yeah. front vault. <laughs> well, she really sticks that landing. She is amazing. She actually looks like she gets mixed up on her steps, but look at the vault she still performs. Shows her great strength. A 9.925 for Nikki Peters, and the University of Michigan is off to a great start. Onto the beam now, Stella Ume of UCLA. There's a cartwheel pike back. Very difficult and cannot be performed better. Ume came in second on the beam the last two years at the NCAA championships. Straddle jump combination. And a reminder, Lena Degteva fell off the beam. Ume needs to hit this routine so that UCLA will not have to count that fall. And she has a very difficult tuck double back dismount. Amazing. So UCLA survives and even thrives on the balance beam. Over to the floor now for Georgia is Leah Brown, 5'8 senior from Atlanta, Georgia. There's a punch front here right into what's called a Rudy. That's a front flip with the one and a half twist. gymnast at 5'8", but it makes it just so beautiful to watch. Her movements are so big, her tumbling is high. And remember, the gymnast has been going for almost a minute 30 at this point. They're very tired, but look at that. Very difficult, double back, no problem. Leah Brown. 
Brown scored tens on the floor in her last three regular season meets. Was this one good enough? Well, we're used to seeing a few tens, but we haven't seen any yet. Look at the way her arms reach up into the air. Serious hang time there. Incredible height, and it's a 9-9-0 for Leah Brown. Stella Ume, 9.925 on the beam. So after two rotations, Arizona State is in the lead. Georgia made up a little bit of ground. Michelle Tafoya is standing by with Georgia coach Suzanne Yachlin. Well, coach, you've been in this situation before <laughs> yeah. where you've come in favored and then struggled early. What happened on the beam? I don't know. <laughs> if I knew, we'd fix it. We have great athletes, very committed. They've worked hard all season. We thought we were ready for the meet. We thought we were prepared for the pressure. Um, we've been consistent the entire season. The gymnast that fell tonight hadn't fallen all year, so I don't know. Just wasn't our day. And it's exciting to see some other teams out there tonight performing, you know, up to this high level and, and doing a good job and hitting. And, you know, it's time for the dynasty to change over, and the Georgia-Alabama-Utah days are over. How do you ask your team now to approach this the rest of the way? Oh, we're just going for it. You know, we have a lot of pride, and we want to make sure that we don't quit on the meets. And, you know, we want to go for a trophy. I mean, maybe we can at least get fourth. You know, we... You know, we've had our moments, and, you know, that's what athletics is all about, ups and downs. Coach, thanks. Good luck. Thanks. And we'll return to Gator Country in the third rotation at the NCAA Gymnastics Championships in a moment. In Nebraska on the vault, Michigan on bars, Florida moves to the beam, and UCLA is on the floor. Let's check in now with Michelle Tafoya. Nebraska is making its first ever appearance at the Super 6 without one of its key competitors. Sophomore Amy Dillman was warming up on the vault at the Midwest Regionals when she dislocated both of her knees on a landing. And that injury required seven hours worth of surgery and prevented Dillman from even traveling to Gainesville to cheer on her teammates. So while they are without her on the vault and the floor exercise, she is here certainly in spirit. They have dedicated these NCAA championships to her with a t-shirt bearing one of her favorite motivational sayings if I'm not tough yet I don't know what tough is and we wish Amy Dillman a successful recovery here's her teammate now Jess Swift to start the Cornhuskers on vault she'll perform a tuck front vault so her knees will actually be bent in the flip position pretty good vault Jess Swift one of the other giant gymnasts at this competition 5'8 like George's Leah Brown that height gives her a different look out there over to the beam now, Courtney Gallivan. She's only competed a few times on beam this year. More of a regular on vault and bars. Again, every routine has a key move. Here's her back handspring, layout backflip. There's a gainer layout. Good solid landing, a little bend in the knees. Courtney comes from a family of athletes. Her older sisters played basketball at Northeastern and her brother races cars on the NASCAR circuit. Jump combination, switch leap, right into a straddle jump. Setting up for her dismount. Laid out back with a full twist. Good body position. Courtney Gallivan getting a hug from coach Judy Markell. Meantime, Jess Swift with a 9.70 for that vault we saw a few moments ago. And Courtney Gallivan scores a 9.85 on beam. UCLA freshman Lena Degteva on the floor now. Degteva fell off the beam in the last rotation. Let's see if she can rebound here. And I'm sure she will because she is a very, usually a very solid performance. It's not usual to see her fall on an apparatus. 
She'll start out here with a tuck double back. Drop down on that landing, very good. Dagteva brings a lot of international experience to this team. She was the Soviet junior champion when she was 12 years old. Her parents immigrated to Canada in 1990. And she's the two-time Canadian national champion. Front full, immediate punch front. Well done. I can never say enough about Valerie Kondos, her choreography, her choice in music. It's just exceptional. She's wrapping it up here with a double twist. And Lena Degteva pulls through for the Bruins. They always do seem to have that extra spark on the floor. Betha Melkovich on the bars now. She actually does a two release moves in this routine. Very high level of difficulty. Start out here with a piped Jaeger flip. Very well done. She'll move up to the high bar and perform the Tkachev, which we see a lot. Very difficult. Swinging very well. Pike double back. Yes! Beth <laughs> Melkovich very happy with that performance. She actually does a giant with a full twist right into a release move. A pike front. Gets good extension in her arms. Come on, guys. Anna Melkovich scores a 9.850. Lena Degteva, meantime, with a 9.775 on the floor. Nicole Wilkinson up next on the vault for Nebraska. Once again, we'll see that Pike front vault. A pretty good vault, but a little short on the landing. Well, so far, not a spectacular rotation for Nebraska. We'll be back with more in a moment. Nicole Wilkinson with a 9.7 on vault, and the leaders are pulling away from Nebraska. Last year, Sarah and David Patterson celebrated their third national title, but this year, Alabama, the first defending national champion not to reach the Super Six. Michelle Tafoya is with Sarah Patterson. What a change for you to be sitting in the stands at this point in the competition. What was so much different about this year for your squad? Well, uh, for my squad, we've, we've been through a lot of different things. Um, you know, my husband recovered from surgery for cancer, and we're just real excited that if we used up all our good luck, that, that we used it up in September when we needed it. And, you know, we've been at the very top of college gymnastics for the last 15 years. And, you know, I'd like to think that we won graciously, and I'd like to think that we can, uh, you know, finish where we did graciously as well. As you sit here watching the Super Six, who impresses you the most? Well, I think UCLA looked tremendous on the balance beam. They were wonderful. And Arizona State, I believe, on bars, it just did a tremendous job. I think this competition is wide open. I don't think there's any one team right now that, that is going to um, blow anyone away. I think it's going to count for every tenth. And I think it's going to be one of the most exciting Super Six. And I hope to be back here soon. Thanks for joining us. No question, Alabama will be back. Michigan on the uneven bars now. Sarah Kane with a very impressive freshman season. And a very impressive bar set. She's another gymnast, performs two release moves. There's that Tkachev. She'll right into a Pike Jaeger. Beautiful form. Giant half, tuck. Front, double front with a half twist. That's the kind of performance you expect from Sarah Kane. She's ranked second in the country on bars. Over to the floor now, Leah Homa of UCLA. Pike double back. It's a nice double turn right into a jump combination. Watch this, the home of flares now on the floor. There's a layout front. 
front, right into a medium tuck front. Leah Homa competing in her last NCAA meet, a four-time All-America. She has been such a dominant performer for the UCLA Bruins. Double twist. Very nicely done. Great job. Leah Homa didn't compete a lot this season on floor because of injuries, but she turns in a nice performance here at the championships. Michigan Sarah Kane scored a 9.90 for her bars routine. And for Leah Homa, a 9.825, the top contenders dueling it out here in the third rotation. Here's Susan Hines on the beam now for Florida. Switch leap, straddle jump combination. Hines is a sophomore from Austin, Texas. Florida has done a tremendous job just to be here in the Super Six. Back handspring right into immediate jump. She dismounts with a fairly easy dismount, front with a full twist. Hines sticks the landing and ignites the Gator crowd here at the O'Connell Center. Here was her mount. Unlike her dismount, a very difficult punch front. Hines with a very solid 9.875, and that's a new career best. Back to the uneven bars, Nikki Peters up for Michigan. Watch how she'll free hip hecked right onto the high bar. You must use both bars during your routine and it must consist of at least 10 moves. Nikki Peters with four perfect tens on the bars this season. She is the Big Ten Bars champion. And watch this dismount. It's dynamic, laid out, double back. Nikki Peters coming off an ankle injury but comes through for the Wolverines. Stella Ume is on the floor now for the Bruins. Talk about incredible. That was a double layout backflip. You just can't even describe how difficult that is. Now she'll do a whip, tuck double back. Ume was the 1995 NCAA floor exercise champion. What a talent Stella Ume is. I mean, it's so difficult to have the combination of being so powerful and yet look at the movements in her body. She's so graceful. To me, she is the epitome of what gymnastics is about, combining the athleticism with beautiful movements. Olympian for Canada finished 16th in the all-around. That was the first time I had a chance to watch Stella and it's been a treat to watch her ever since. Beautiful high tuck double back. This is going to score very high. Stella Ume from Mississauga, Ontario. Watch how she gets such a strong approach and she blocks her body straight up in the air for tremendous height. Stella Ume with a 9.90. And a 9.950 for Nikki Peters on the uneven bars. And the Michigan Wolverines have now moved into the lead. 
So halfway through the competition Michigan is on top by less than a half of a point followed by Arizona State and UCLA. Back in Gainesville Florida with three rotations remaining it's Michigan in the lead followed by Arizona State UCLA Florida Nebraska and Georgia. Well there were other champions crowned here at the NCAA's for more on the individual and all around competitions here's Michelle and Julianne. The 1997 NCAA all-around title was won by Georgia junior Kim Arnold, who beat out defending champion Meredith Willard of Alabama with a 39.55. It's not easy to master all four disciplines in the sport of gymnastics, but Kim Arnold has proven herself as an all-round competitor. She's a dynamic vaulter. Look at the height on the vault there. And she's really improved here on the uneven bars. Some made some great strides. Kim also won the SEC all-around title and is the fifth straight NCAA all-around champion out of the SEC. Kim has always been known for her power, but I really feel like she's really blossomed into a consistent and clean performer. In the individual competition, Georgia's Jenny Bethard took honors on the uneven parallel bars with a score of 995. Bethard fell off the bars in the final rotation of last year's team competition, and the sophomore had to recover from two ankle surgeries this past fall. For Bethard, this performance, and in particular, her dismount, punctuated her comeback. I couldn't even do a handstand on the bars. I mean, it was awful. And I had my whole team supporting me and my coaching staff, and they just pushed my butt back into shape and just got me to where I am today. Tight competition on the beam resulted in co-champions. Utah's Summer Reed and Arizona State's Elizabeth Reed finished with nine nines. Throughout the competition, Elizabeth had shown tremendous composure for her young Sun Devil team. Her beam performance was highlighted by her trademark flexibility and a more than solid dismount. Summer Reed was spectacular getting on and off the beam. The defending co-champs performance was an indicator that Utah will be back in the thick of things next year. I got up there and I try not to think about defending my championship from last year. And I just got up there and wanted to have fun and show off and show everybody what I could do and I did and it was a lot of fun. Another underclassman took the title on vault. Florida sophomore Susan Hines delighted the home crowd by upsetting defending champion Leah Brown. Her sensational landing left Hines delighted as well. It was totally amazing. It was a dream come true just to have the support that we did and to hear my teammates in the stands totally pulling behind me was just the best feeling I could have ever experienced. Being upset on the vault didn't dampen Leah Brown's spirits. She simply dominated the floor exercise. The Georgia star was the only senior to walk away with an individual title. Energy, tremendous power, and incredible height garnered her a 995 on the floor. as a senior every gymnast wants to come into this championship and really make a splash with leah brown her athletic achievements are apparent she's very dynamic and powerful she's had a tremendous career and i think really what really shines through with leah now is her sheer joy for the sport Leah Brown's sheer joy translates to the crowd as well. They loved her performance, and she loved their support. I 
I've always said I like to pull the crowd into my performance. They keep pushing me, you know, my routine is exhausting to me. But uh, when you have thousands of people screaming your name and pushing you and wanting you to excel, it's always motivating for you to do the best you can do. And now those individuals will try to motivate their teams. The team title still up for grabs. Back with the second half of the competition after this message and a word from your local station. some great performances here in Gainesville at the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. And this could be the year someone other than Utah, Alabama, or Georgia takes home the trophy. Andrea Joyce alongside Julianne McNamara. We could be witnessing a changing of the guard in women's collegiate gymnastics. How impressed are you by the performance so far from the University of Michigan? Well, very impressed. I think the most impressive thing is the fact that they're being so aggressive. They're not holding back at all. In other words, they're not being tentative and trying not to make mistakes. They're being positive and just going for it. Georgia put themselves in a hole from the get-go on the beam. Is it possible for the gym dogs to get back in this? Well, in this sport, nothing's impossible, but I'd say it's pretty improbable. They've lost the momentum. The other teams, they're just too on, and they really have gained the momentum, and I think, it's, I think Georgia's going to have a hard time getting back in. Georgia moves to the vault in this rotation. Nebraska on the uneven bars. Arizona State is on beam. Florida on the floor. UCLA and Michigan have buys. Let's check in now with Michelle and Wolverine coach Bev Plotke. Well, at the halfway mark, your team is in the lead with beam coming up next. And floor, what mentally is going right out there? How should they fare on the beam? Well, we did very well on the beam last night. I think they have a lot of confidence. Beam is beam, though. So um, we're going to take the bye to kind of calm down from first two great events and, and try to prepare ourselves. How do you manage to keep gymnasts calm in this situation? I think it's a confidence factor. Uh, we talked about really not having, you know, 100% expectation that we have to win. We, what we have to do is do well and let the things that we can't control happen as they will. And I think that, you know, they don't feel pressure to win. They just want to do well. And so far, that's what they're doing. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. Georgia may have felt that pressure early on. Now they're just trying to finish the best they can. Here's Julie Ballard. And you have to give them a lot of credit. They're really fighting back just to stay in there. Good ball, tight front. Georgia comes out with fire in its eyes. The gym dogs may not win this championship, but they seem determined to go down fighting. And that's Julie's brother, Stephen Ballard, in his first year as an assistant coach at Georgia. Kim Kiever is on the beam now for Arizona State. She's a junior from Las Vegas, Nevada. And that was an acrobatic move called an illusion. It's very difficult on the floor, let alone the balance beam. Little slight bobble on that jump. Handspring quarter turn. Beam is spelled trouble for the traditional powerhouses here at the championships. Alabama faltered on beam in the preliminaries, didn't make the finals, and Georgia, first rotation, two falls on the beam. Well, it's always what we call the psych event. It's no different here. Gainer layup, full dismount. Kim Kiever stays composed. Julie Ballard with a 9.95 for the Gym Dogs. And Kiever equals her season high on beam with a 9.850. Angel Wood set to go now on the floor for Florida. She'll open with a pike double back. Oh, completely 
over rotates, that'll be a tenth for each foot out, plus the deductions on the steps backwards. Tuck front right through to a front layout full. Angel just joined the Florida team last spring after sitting out competitive gymnastics for four years. She needs to tighten up her form a little bit. You can see little leg breaks. Her toes aren't fully extended. Here's another front tumbling combination. Layout front, punch front. One major mistake, Julianne, in this one. Well, usually you worry about the gymnast under-rotating. She actually has too much momentum. And as you can see, she over-rotates, which causes the problem. And Wood scores a 9.475. Kim Arnold, this year's all-around champion, ready to vault. And she is an excellent vaulter. Pike front, beautiful form. Great vault by the 20-year-old junior. She has had six perfect vaults this year. She gets tremendous height and perfect form. Not a 10, but an impressive 9.950 for Kim Arnold. Freshman Elizabeth Reed up now for Arizona State on the beam. Very difficult mount, layout back right onto the beam. Very smooth. There's a hard combination, back handspring, two layouts. Incredible. Switch leap, split jump. She has the most beautiful extension in her arms and legs. Wonderful flexibility. She has been a an excellent reflection of the Arizona State team. They have been composed and have performed beautifully so far at the championships. She's one of those gymnasts that makes it look easy. <laughs> Remember, she's up there on four inches, four feet off the ground. One of her great attributes is her perfect body alignment, which is one reason she's so great on this event. Setting up for her dismount, two back handsprings, double twist. An awesome performance. Elizabeth Reed, another calm, composed showing for Arizona State. We'll be back. Elizabeth Reed scored a 9.90 for her beam routine, and Arizona State is looking very good here in the fourth rotation. Here's Carrie Courtney. Courtney having her best season as a collegiate gymnast. And Arizona State having one of their best seasons in a long time as a team. Her most important element right here, two back handsprings into that laid out back flip. Uh, oh, the beam is getting everyone here. As Carrie Courtney resumes her routine now. Let's head over to the uneven bars. Here's Shelly Bartlett of Nebraska. Shelly is the Huskers' top all-around gymnast and the team's best bars worker. Good height on her release move to Kachev. She does a giant hop here. Full twist, tuck double back, beautiful landing. Bartlett very happy with that one, Julianne. As they should be, she does a very difficult giant hop, good height on the dismount. And Bartlett scores a 9.925.
Over on the vault now, Leah Brown, last year's vault champion, set to go for Georgia. She is a fantastic vaulter. She'll perform a front with a half twist, and she lays it out. Boy, I am amazed by the intensity Georgia is showing here in the fourth rotation, bouncing back from such a dismal start. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is actually called a pike front, but she's so high, she actually lays her body out. And there it is, a 9.975, the highest score of the competition. The gym dogs are fired up. Harry Courtney with the fall off the beam scores a 9.150 for the Sun Devils. Pressure on the rest of the team now to hit their routines so they can throw that low score out. Here's Megan Wright. Right at the top of her routine, she has a difficult combination. Back handspring, and she'll do two layout flips in a row. Right here. Beautiful. Very difficult. Arizona State hoping to return to the status they achieved in the 80s. They were the runner-up at the national championship in 83, 85, and 86. Back handspring quarter turn right into a back hip circle as though the balance beam were a bar. So far, moving very well. She dismounts with a double twist. Right on. And a solid performance by Megan Wright. Over on the floor now, Florida's Chrissy Vogel. 22-year-old senior, this should get the crowd going. She's got a gator medley for her floor routine. And that's what this event is all about. Sometimes that can really make a difference. Getting the crowd into it has an effect on the judges. Opens with a pike double back. That'll keep the crowd going. She's going to tumble right into a whip to another double back, this time in a tuck position. This is Florida's alma mater now. Florida hasn't been able to catch up after faltering in the first rotation on bars. They've done pretty well on floor, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Jump combination as she sets up for her last tumbling run. Not as hard as her first two runs. It's a full twist, but she does it very well, as well as it can be done. Well, this has been a great competition for Chrissy Vogel. Coach Judy Markell coming off an eighth place finish last year. Very proud of this Florida squad. We'll take a look at her first pass. Very high pike double back, good form in the air. And every Florida floor exercise has this, the Gator Chomp. So Vogel scores a 9.825, the Gators' best floor score, but it won't be enough to keep pace with the leaders. Megan Wright, meantime, with a 9.850 on the beam. So now, after four rotations, it's Arizona State on top. It'll be up to Michigan and UCLA coming off buys to try and catch the Sun Devils. Down here in Gainesville, only the strongest survive. The CBS Sports Show continues in a moment. And UCLA is on the vault. Georgia moves to the uneven bars. Michigan is on beam, and Arizona State is on the floor. 
Here's Carmen Towson for the Bruins and Julianne she performs one of the most difficult vaults in the sport. Well it's actually a Sukahara with a half twist. Excellent landing. Towson has come on strong late in the season hitting 10 of 12 routines since February. Over to the beam now and Lisa signs. The coaches call her the quiet storm. She has a way of sneaking up on the competition, they say. Showing excellent flexibility in her jumps. <laughs> Key tumbling run. Two back hands rings laid out backflip. Oh, this is unbelievable. Wow. The beam continues to be the killer here, and the door is open for Arizona State. Here's Amy Shelton over on the floor. Well, they were one team that had success on the balance beam, which has kept them right in the competition. Front through tuck, double back. scored a 9.9 .9 or better in the floor exercise on three occasions this year. She moves very well, has a very traditional style, classical style, very pretty to watch. Julianne, these young women are going to be around for a while. That's right. Scores now. Lisa Symes pays for that fall with a 9.250 on the beam. Amy Shelton helps the Sun Devils cause with a 9.825 on the floor. And UCLA gets a boost from Carmen Towson, a 9.850 vault score. Now let's see if Lena Degteva can keep it going for the Bruins. She usually performs a front with a half twist. This time a pike front. A good vault for her. Well, we mentioned earlier she grew up in the Soviet sports system, knows a little bit about pressure. This probably seems like nothing to her. Back to Arizona State now on the floor, Elizabeth McNabb. for her first tumbling run. Punch front, right into a double tuck. Like Amy Shelton, Elizabeth McNabb has done very well for the Sun Devils on the floor. Another good high pike double back. Tumbles out of it right into a round off. Straddle jump combination. During one five-match span this season, she averaged 9.93 on the floor. Head coach John Spini has really improved his team. He's added a coach in Kristen Smith, who's really done some fabulous choreography. Double twist. Remember, Arizona State sits out the last rotation, so this is where they have to make their mark. Nice job by McNabb. The desert has indeed blossomed, and so has Elizabeth McNabb. She has made major contributions to the Arizona State program. And the judges award Lena Degteva 9.875 for the vault we saw a few moments ago. 
and McNabb with a 9.875. We'll be back. Day in Gainesville, Florida. Down on the floor at the O'Connell Center, Valerie Condos and UCLA in good position, thanks in part to their Canadian connection. Oh, Canada, land of the free. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Canadian connection. Well, here it is. Three of UCLA's stars are from Canada. Georgia, Michigan, and Nebraska have recruited north of the border as well. With all their success, the Canadians are feeling right at home. We get teased, but now we're, we're kind of invading the U.S., so almost all teams have a Canadian, so it's hard to pick on us because we're, we're more united this year. And in unity, there is strength. It's all come together this year for UCLA. Here's Leah Homa. She vaults a pike front vault. She did it again, a beautiful vault. Leah Homa has been so consistent for the Bruins this year. The only thing I can say that's critical about this vault, she has a slight leg separation and bend on the pre-flight. But other than that, Pretty good. And a good score, a nine point. This year's uneven bars champion up now for Georgia. Giant, the reverse grip. Right into her release move to Tchikachev. She does a full twisting double back dismount. Usually lands it very well. Jenny Bethard started the competition falling off the beam, but she's got to feel good about the way she's bounced back at this competition. We see a lot of the gymnasts do a tuck double, but she adds a full twist on the first flip. And Jenny Bethard scores a 9.950 on the bars. Her teammates with her every step of the way here. There's Andrea McDonald. She scored a 9.625 on the beam for Michigan. Julianne, tell us about her trouble on the beam. Well, she had a very significant bobble, cost a few tenths of a point on really a fairly simple move, a back handspring. And they'll have to count that score because of an earlier fall. So Heather Kabnick now will try to pick it up for the Wolverines. And this is an event that you really don't want to have to be picking up the momentum. It's much easier if everybody has a steady performance, but it doesn't always work that way. Back handspring, back handspring layout. Very difficult, very well done. Just a tiny bobble on her full turn. Maybe somebody should measure that beam. Make sure it is four inches wide. <laughs> Switch leap, right into a gainer layout. Just another tiny bobble. Unfortunately, those little bobbles add up. But she so far is really handling the pressure. for her dismount. Tuck double back dismount. A little short on the landing, but an incredibly hard dismount. Kabnick, the All-American from Coral Springs, Florida, perhaps breathing a sigh of relief. Over to the floor now, and Elizabeth Reed. And what a meet she is having so far. into a front with a half twist called a branny. Well, with Michigan having its trouble on the beam, that has opened the door for Arizona State and UCLA. This is another 
another gymnast that moves very elegantly. Nice double twist. Watching Elizabeth Reed compete, it's kind of hard to believe she's just 18 years old. Still a kid at heart, though. She collects stuffed animals and keychains. Turning in another great performance so far. Here's that last tumbling run. A Rudy, a front with a one and a half twist. Well, it has really been fun to watch this freshman compete. Arizona State struggled on the floor at the Pac-10 Championships, finished a disappointing sixth. They have got to be excited about the way they've performed here. Michigan losing steam in this rotation. Heather Kamnick with a 9.70 on the beam. Arizona State not letting up a 9.90 for Reed, her third 9.9 of the day. And it's been a great day for Leah Brown, the Georgia senior, in her last NCAA competition. And this is normally a very strong event for Leah. There's a giant full and a half twist right into a Jaeger flip. She performs hers in a straddle position. Sets up for a Tkachev, good height. Since Georgia's disaster in the first rotation on beam, they have performed remarkably well. An emotional moment for Leah Brown as she caps off her collegiate career with an outstanding bars routine. Here's that one and a half twist. She does a front flip in a straddle position. She drops down onto the bar the way it should be done. And a well-deserved 9.975 for Brown. A great rotation for Georgia, but they couldn't overcome that early deficit. Arizona State in the lead, and now UCLA and Michigan have one more chance to catch the Sun Devils. Michelle Tafoya is standing by with ASU coach John Spini. Well, you have a young team that is performing like veterans. They've been so composed. Elizabeth Reed, a freshman, three nine nines. How have you kept them so together? You know, I kind of just stay out of their way. They're they're pretty motivated. Those kids really wanted to be here, and I think they have a good chemistry. And I think that's what we're doing right now. They they really like the team aspects of gymnastics. These young kids came in, and they wanted to compete for their team, and that's where we're at. Right now, you're standing in first with Michigan and UCLA tied behind you. You have to sit here and watch for the results. How excruciating will this be? Well, we're done. I'm kind of okay with that. I just want to see where we end up. We did the best we could do, and it's a great championship. First, second, third, wherever we end up, I'm going to be happy. My team did everything they could. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Georgia, meantime, after messing up big early, couldn't have performed much better. After beam, they were nearly flawless. A difficult, emotional moment for Suzanne Yachlin as she consoles her team. There will be no national championship this year, but what a courageous effort by this group as they fought their way back into this competition. I just think it's just not our day, and I don't think you should make a big thing out of it. You should feel really good about yourselves. Some things we just don't control. All the work we put in and the effort we put in the entire season, how hard you guys work together, that's what really counts because that's what you can control. Okay? Leader after five rotations, Arizona State with a bye in the last round, forced to sit and watch. It is out of their hands now. Go UCLA knows what it has to do. The Bruins will be on the uneven bars. Florida closes the meet out on vault, Nebraska on beam, and Michigan is on the floor. Bev Plocky trying to rally her troops despite losing their earlier lead. The Wolverines are tied with UCLA. They will battle it out to catch Arizona State. On the bars now for UCLA, Deborah Mink. And I would say UCLA is in a very comfortable position. This is one of their best events. 
They'll just need to hit. And there's a big release move called a ganger. Setting up for her dismount. A very difficult laid out double back. What a landing. Now to catch Arizona State, UCLA and Michigan must average a 9.845 in this rotation. Over to the floor now, Andrea McDonald's routine underway. A good high punch front through a pike double back. Michigan trying to pick up some ground in this rotation. They were a little flat on beam, had their troubles. Again a front, but this time through a double twist. McDonald's got to be disappointed all the way through the routine and a stumble right at the end. Michigan's really in a tough position because they're trying to make up ground and really floor exercise is one of their weaker events. This is where the trouble came at the end of the floor routine. You are very tired and she doesn't get enough height to complete two twists. She touches down one of her hands. That'll be three tenths of a point. And McDonald with a 9.250. Deborah Mink pulls through for UCLA, 9.825 on the bars. But so far, neither UCLA nor Michigan is scoring high enough to catch Arizona State. Hiroli Hayashi up now to make a push for the Bruins. UCLA has a lot of depth on this apparatus. Every single competitor is definitely capable of scoring very high. Kira Lee swings very nice on this event. There's a nice high Jaeger flip. She's very smooth, has good form. Nice tuck double back dismount. And the UCLA crowd is on its feet. They have traveled a long way to watch this one. Michigan coach Bev Plocky in need of some big performances now from her gymnast. Here's Beth Amelkovich. Michigan has come on strong in the last few years. 1995, a second place tie with Alabama at the national championships. Last year, battled through a season of injuries, finished in sixth, and they're still in contention this year. Nice high pike double back. She does a whip back right to a tuck double back. Get through this last tumbling run. Front with a full twist. Beth Amelkovich, she has had a solid competition. But will she score high enough for the Wolverines to make a run at Arizona State? 
No letdown for UCLA. Hayashi with a 9.850. Over to the vault now in Florida's Chrissy Van Fleet. Good fast approach. Nice pipe front. Great vault. As a youngster, Chrissy spent nine hours a day in the gym, and that work is still paying off today. A subdued Michigan squad, a Melkovich with a 9.750 on the floor. Van Fleet's vault score, 9.950. Florida will not go out quietly. Well, amidst the tension of the final rotation, the leader, Arizona State, can only watch and wonder if they did enough. The conclusion to the championship when we come back. UCLA continues to chase Arizona State. The Sun Devils on a bye in the final rotation. Too painful for some to even watch. Stella Ume's dad leading the cheers for UCLA as his daughter begins her final routine of the competition. And of course, Stella does not have a weak event. Two giant foals right into a Takacha. There's her transition onto the low bar. Ume, a two-time All-America on the bars. Double twisting, laid out flyaway. The UCLA gymnasts refuse to crack under the pressure. They continue to compete at a very high level of intensity. You watch her hands here, you can see the variation where she completes a full twist. As impressive as the height is her form in the air. Valerie Condos with a hug for Ume as she scores a 9.925, and at that pace, they will catch Arizona State. Meantime, time is running out for Michigan. Let's see what Lisa Symes can do now for the Wolverines. run. Tuck double back. This is Syme's favorite event. She's one of the Canadian competitors we talked about earlier. Almost stepped out of bounds. And really not a difficult pass. You're seeing a lot of the front tumbling that's re that's fulfilling requirements, but I don't think it's as exciting as the back tumbling. Well, Michigan still seems a little flat. They had the lead at the halfway point in this competition, but ever since the beam, they have lost some spark. Tumbling run, front full twist, punch front, a little low on the landing. Uh, Symes looking a little pessimistic about that performance. Back over to the vault now, Chrissy Vogel, a two-time vault All-America. Pike front back. Great landing. Vogel, a great job for the hometown hero. Grew up right here in Gainesville. She's got a lot of support on hand. And a great way to end her collegiate career. A spectacular vault on her home floor. Lisa Symes pacing the floor. 9.725 for her floor routine. Michigan coach Bev Plocky. Heidi Moneymaker. 
can be a history maker now. UCLA can clinch the championship here with a score of over 9.75. And she's one to watch for in the future. She's a freshman this year. She's had a few injuries that have kept her on the sidelines, but she's an excellent all-around gymnast. Beautiful height on that to Kotchev. Right into a piked Jaeger. Setting up for her dismount. Top double fly away. Did she do it? Well, the Bruins look confident. The Sun Devils more than a little concerned. She gets good momentum on the giant swings, which propels her in the air. And that does it. A 9.925 for Heidi Moneymaker. UCLA has won the national championship. Well, the pressure is off Valerie Condos, and now Leah Homa can enjoy herself as she wraps up her collegiate career. And we will enjoy this performance because she is spectacular on this event. Look at her beautiful toe point. It's extraordinary. There was a Jaeger flip in the straddle position. I have seen her score a 10.0 on this event. Sets up here for a laid out. Double fly away, perfect form. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but smiles for the UCLA Bruins. They build a spectacular final rotation to win their first NCAA title. And Stella Ume knows how close it was. <laughs> Homa's final score, a 9.950. Over on the floor now, Sarah Kane wrapping things up for the Wolverines. Nice high tuck double back. As we get a chance to glance into the future of Miss Michigan Gymnastics. A very talented young freshman. Sarah had two tens on the floor this season, but even a 10 here wouldn't help Michigan much. They're pretty much playing now for third or fourth place. And although things didn't go the way they had hoped today, they have to be happy in the fact that they've really established themselves as a force in women's collegiate gymnastics. Well, it's the end of an era. Gymnastics no longer dominated by just Utah, Alabama, and Georgia. Add to the list UCLA, Arizona State, and Michigan. Well, the Wolverines had the lead halfway through the competition. They had the title in their sights, but faltered in the final rounds. A strong showing by the Pac-10, first and second UCLA and Arizona State. Meantime, a 9.80 for Sarah Kane. Good showing for the freshman, but it's Valerie Condos and the Bruins with the national championship. So here are the final standings. It was close. UCLA on top. Arizona State, the runner-up. Georgia pulled its way up to third. Michigan, Florida, and Nebraska. Michelle Tafoya standing by now with the national champions. Congratulations, runners up last year. How did that impact what this team wanted to accomplish this year? Just basically the same thing. Go out and do the best gymnastics we can. And however the scores line up, that's how they line up. And that's exactly what we did. I didn't think, after two events, I didn't really think that we had a chance. I thought it was between ASU and Michigan, and we just kept plugging away. Let's do the best gymnastics we can. That's you, what we trained for. You guys finished up on the uneven parallel bars, which ended up being your best event. What was the team's mindset going into that last rotation? I can't say that on TV. <laughs> But they had put the scores up, and they don't usually do that. You know, the last, the, the fourth event, like we knew what Arizona State had scored, and I had Stella Ume come up to me saying, 
don't tell me we in Michigan are tied. I was like, well, okay, then I won't tell you that. I don't know. They just dug down deep and did what they trained to do every single day. This is almost an historical win. It really is because normally the same three teams have won this event. It's a changing of the guard. What does it mean to have UCLA be such a significant part of this? It's a changing of the guard and it's huge for UCLA because we have had so many years. I've been there since 1982 and we have so many years where I really felt that we were best team on the floor and didn't get the job done and we got the job done. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You. Let's turn to your senior, Leah Homa. What a way to finish up. Not only a national title, you were fourth in the all-around. You finished up with a 995 on the parallel bars in your final collegiate rotation. What did that feel like? I was happy to be done, but it's sad to be done at the same time. I'm ecstatic. I don't know what to say. I just i am so excited. You and your teammates have said coming in, you're not that hyper of a team. You don't get that excited. Isn't it time yet? It's time now. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Michelle. It was a memorable competition for everyone involved. Congratulations once again to the new champions, the UCLA Bruins. Stay tuned for golf. It's the Sprint Title Holders Championship coming up next live from Daytona Beach. UCLA finally wins it all with a history-making performance. A well-deserved win makes it extra special. For Julianne McNamara and Michelle Tafoya, I'm Andrea Joyce saying so long from Gainesville. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.